until you get inside a space like this, until you understand the sciences and the design and the display mechanisms, people don't quite understand what we're trying to achieve. It's not about culture alone, this is about learning. So whatever we can provide to give the community a chance to come in and learn about the community, learn about the history and heritage, learn about geology, learn about volcanics, learn about Aboriginal Dreamtime stories that are quite unique for Mount Gambia. It's all of those elements that we find quite passionate that we want to provide as standalone displays. That people also are a bit uh, uh, confused by why doesn't the new building look like the old building. Uh, there's a specific reason for that is that the uh, materials we use these days, uh, the building code requirements and uh, means that we have new building materials, we don't have the artisans, uh, and that means time, energy and money to actually replicate the old built forms. Uh, and it's important that we give the building a new life and uh, not replicate, not tamper with what is seen as the art and the craft of uh, our forefathers, uh, which is quite obvious and uh, quite striking, uh, but a new built form that acknowledges uh, the architecture without copying it. It's not faux art. Um, we are establishing a new built form that will stand the test of time, we hope. Now the cave is, let's say, the cave out of the ground. It's a section through a sea note or a sinkhole. It's a bit like uh, a section through the side of the blue lake. And the materials are what uh, is a geological metamorphosis. So limestone, now coralline limestone is, had been laying down from the seabeds that existed uh, tens of thousands of years ago. And from that limestone, uh, through time, pressure and uh, uh, heat, uh, along comes dolomite. It is a second incarnation of limestone. The third incarnation in geological terms is, is marble. Uh, this area is too young actually for marble but the marble we've used which are the tiles, the fractured tiles on the plinth base of the, the main stone wall um, are Australian. Uh, the other major form in there is a basalt band and that's representative in geological terms of our lava, of the volcanic history. So you've got a lava flow through there and it's just like a section through. Um, our landscape. main entry door really is a foyer. Um, it's an atrium that allows you access to a number of other spaces. So it's like the porch. Uh, that then provides access to the gallery in a couple of ways. It also provides a ground floor level um, access around the south, uh, looking into the cave gardens, but undercover access all the way around to the city hall, which has now been in use for six or seven years as a, uh, a function reception facility for any kinds, weddings, parties, anything, that old terminology. Um, all sorts of functions. The foyer wall then also then allows people to travel uh, to a first floor, which has never been able to be done before. So up the stairs or and a lift uh, to a balcony area, which provides a nice reception facility. And then there's uh, four points of access: one for administration. Some of the council officers will be housed there and act as uh, event managers, but also carry on other duties. There is a small theatrette. Um, which we're calling the balcony, which is, uh, hasn't been seen for, let's say, 40 years, which was the old dress circle of the King's Theatre. It has been revamped and turned into a 112 small theatrette. Um, many purposes. Um, that can, uh, uh, it'll be a major projection facility. It'll have data projectors for lectures. It could there will also be a string quartet on a Sunday afternoon, a champagne and canapes on the balcony, or a jazz ensemble, a uh, small theatre for school children, um, hireable for any number of events. Um, then beyond uh, to the south is the major uh, floor, King's Floor, it's uh, been uh, nominated as. Uh, it will have some static and uh, technological displays, giving history, um, and, uh, and also some uh, touch screens indicating um, some new, new forms, a uh, history of the Admela and uh, some cave structures that people would, uh, wouldn't be aware of. Uh, also a space that can be used for uh, conferences, um, uh, dining, meeting groups. It links then directly to the Institute building where there are already three 
meeting rooms and that's then connected to the town hall. So you now have three buildings interconnected for um, uh, multiple use purposes, uh, community, hiring, all sorts of things, and at the same time connected to the city hall. I think the advantage of bold decisions made by committees in the past is to fantastic because if those decisions weren't made, we wouldn't have these magnificent heritage buildings that we now enjoy today. And I believe the main corner represents the same value. That value is in a hundred years time, the main corner project today will form part of the history of tomorrow. I think that's a fantastic reflection on the duty that we have as a community and a council to provide those sorts of community assets now that also have a life well into the future.